This video is kind of a history of my car trailer from purchasing it on Craigslist to redoing it a couple different times and all the little fabrication things I've done on it between now and then. Uh, when I bought it, it was in pretty rough shape, but I saw its potential. Uh, hopefully that will inspire you to see the potential in something and maybe hone your fabrication skills and create something that uh, you can be proud of and have uh, you know, a, a small amount of cash in. From this to this extreme trailer makeover. I bought my trailer on Craigslist in February of 2014. This is what it looked like at the time I purchased it. Uh, although it was very rough looking, I saw its potential. And it gave me a good project to fabricate with. As you can see, it's had many different tabs and paint and, you know, this and that welded onto it. The wiring was all over the place. It had an old winch on there. Um, you know, there was these hook things. Who knows what they were for? You know, this trailer was built in 1967. Um, it was missing a hubcap. It had hubcaps and white wall car tires on it. Uh, uh, yeah. The uh, ends were not capped, they were open on the metal, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, it had ramp holders welded underneath. Uh, the lighting was ripped off in places and dangling, as you can see, uh, wiring on the outside of the trailer. The first alteration I made to the trailer was to cut the tail off and make it a dovetail. I have slotted it in this photo and this photo for the side plates that I'll be welding on once the uh, dovetail is welded back in place. This is all mock-up stage in these photos. I'm just trying to get the best fit possible before it's permanently welded. Here it is welded in place and here is a shot of the plates I welded on the out each side of the uh, rails. Here's one side finished up on the inside of it. I draw cars for money. There's a link in the description below. This video is a mix of slides and video clips. Uh, early on when I got the trailer, I didn't think to do any videos, so that portion of this is going to be a lot of slides. The fenders had several different tabs on there from mounting and dismounting, and uh, you know who knows if it was even the original fenders, but they were pretty rough, so I ended up cutting all of that off. And you can see the tabs in these shots here, and uh, I lowered the fenders using a piece of wood for a spacer on top of the tires where I wanted the fenders to sit and uh, fabricated my own mounts to actually bolt and unbolt the fenders and you can see one of the mounts here that I have fabricated and this excess uh, fender below this mount will be removed There's my swivel jack, the original jack. I have since replaced that with a newer jack. There's the fenders bobbed, as you could call it. A close-up of the mounting bracket. I kind of had a budget build planned with this, so I made my own hooks out of some old U-bolts. Uh, so far, they're working well. I uh, fabricated some metal to go on the back sides of the fenders because they were open when I got it and I didn't think that was such a great idea. Uh, it cl really cleaned up the look and you know protects the uh, vehicle while it's on the trailer. Uh, there's a shot of some of them weird tabs left over. Uh, these parts right here are going to get cut off. And 
and you can tell there's been several different brackets on there over the years uh, here's my new bracket that the fender will sit on and we'll make the fender removable that way here I am uh, mounting them to the fenders, the brackets and the uh, fenders originally I did it where they bolted on with four bolts uh, there were no tire chocks on this trailer so I added those with some angle some of the uh, fabrication work that I did I cleaned up the hitch where I removed the uh, original jack I boxed in the ends that were all open on this trailer I added some uh, hooks and I added the center bar to mount my swivel jack to here is the mount for the uh, splash guards that I put on the back of the trailer I uh, started pour 15 uh, coating the uh, metal uh, since it was pretty rusty this was a bit of a lengthy process because I would work a little bit of area at a time and uh, you know have to quit for the evening or, or whatever and so I would sand and then paint small portions of it at a time with the 415 uh, I added new safety chains the old ones were pretty rusty uh, there you can see a remnant of me doing some spray painting on the uh, white car I uh, ended up rewiring the entire thing because the lighting and the wiring that was on the trailer was just shot. So I uh, I pulled all new wire. Every light is new. And, you know, most of the lights were broken off anyway, so they had to be replaced. And I uh, painted the trailer with uh, Walmart brand flat black spray paint after the Pour 15 dried. And the uh, back sides of the uh, fenders were originally open and I, I filled those in with metal so it wouldn't throw rocks up on the car. I uh, Pour 15 the wheels before I painted them silver. Here's some more shots of the wiring. Here's like the the main box where all the wiring runs to and then runs to the plug that goes to the truck. Here's some various shots, license plate light, you know, wiring ran for that. I had to buy an electric impact wrench to get the wheels off because those bolts were stuck on. Uh, I got a little creative with my reflective decals and cut them into diamond shapes. Um, and you know, I used flat black paint, so you know they kind of stuck out a little bit, I guess. Um, I ended up putting trailer tires on the wheels this time rather than the white wall car tires. I used uh, Duplicolor wheel paint to paint them silver. An original tire became a planter, and I ended up buying some nice stainless steel trim rings to put on there to uh, spruce it up a little bit. And then I cut Pontiac Arrowhead decals for the center caps. Uh, I painted all the lug nuts, a uh, good old pizza box. Here's some shots of it pretty much finished up for the first time as flat black paint. Another shot of my swivel jack. Uh, close up of the wiring, all completed and tied together. I'm testing the lights here to make sure they all work. And the splash guards are from a fourth gen Firebird that I cut down. The first time using the trailer for its intended purpose came over five years after I bought it when I hauled my car for the first time to the track. I went down to Indianapolis uh, Raceway Park or Lucas Oil Raceway as it's known now and uh, on a test and tune night. The body mounted torque arm on my car 
came in contact with the trailer when I loaded it the first time so I have uh, marked these areas to cut and drop the bars uh, here you can see where I've cut one out and here is where I'm adding some pieces to it to drop it uh, roughly three inches it was just metal that I had on hand and I also did the second one uh, by the license plate the ramps that came with the trailer posed their own problem as my car was very low I had dovetailed the trailer but still required these wood pieces and then I decided to extend the ramps with metal which was a good idea until I tried to pick them up they were super heavy I mean like really heavy so therefore I decided to split them in two and uh, make like a hinge system and use uh, pry bars here you can see the ramp as one piece which was uh, just not going to work and you know, I, I tried it I, you know, obviously I made the entire ramp and then I made these pin systems with the uh, pry bars to hold it to the trailer because I was having trouble with the ramps popping off when I was loading the car this took care of that problem for sure and here you can see where I've split the ramps in two and uh, created a hinge system the, these ramps were still very heavy and uh, you know kind of cumbersome and uh, you know I had to load them in the back of the pickup truck so I slapped these wheels on them that you'll see again here in another shot uh, there was like plastic you know cheapy wheels uh, the, you know the ramps were like eight foot long because I needed the length to get them low enough so the car wouldn't drag when I was loading it and you know I painted them up real nice and I even marked them passenger side and driver side because they were just a little bit different uh, when I made them because uh, I think the trailer isn't quite square anymore but that's okay and here's a shot of them loaded in the truck which the wheels helped but they were still super heavy then I decided to uh, add a winch so I could pull the car up on the trailer because uh, I'm not real fond of driving that up on there uh, and I had an old toolbox that I used uh, to uh, build a covering for it rather than buying just a removable cloth cover you know if I paint it black and cut the bottom out of it so I could slide it over the top and the uh, bracket that the winch is mounted to is actually welded to the trailer and uh, you know I tucked all the wiring inside the box I did build a wood floor for the trailer uh, spent a considerable amount of time doing so and uh, you know built it you know, where I didn't have to use bolts and uh, it didn't last very long it ended up rotting and uh, you know I had to uh, take it back off anyway when I lowered the trailer to be able to ramp, put the ramps on so I wanted to uh, include it this will be the second time I hauled the car on the trailer uh, I took it down to Indianapolis Raceway Park or Lucas Oil Raceway in Indianapolis as it's called now and uh, this was also the first time uh, using the ramps after I made them into two pieces. Uh, ignore the idle of the engine, I had a vacuum leak. Um, and here's a picture of the ramps. The new trailer jack appeared sometime after my first trip to the track and before my second trip, as you can see in the preceding video of me pulling the car up to the trailer. Um, I don't have any other information on it other than I know it was put in and sometime during that time period. Don't ever underestimate the many uses of a car trailer. In between making passes, this makes a perfect seat. I can sit down here and enjoy a nice cold bottle of water and watch the car as it overheated. That has since been fixed. I borrowed this idea from a U-Haul trailer. The uh, red circle highlights a tie down that holds a fender in place and when I remove the tie down the fender folds down allowing me easy access to the car. My first time getting to try out the new ramps and fold down fenders came in June of 2020 when I took the car over to Muncie Dragway for a radial and slick tire test and tune night. Uh, everything worked just great. 
didn't have any issues at all. Um, I was very pleased. When I'm not using the trailer, it's typically parked right back here in the corner, which is a pain in the neck to get to. But this is one last look at it before I start cutting. Um, I had a wood floor in it and it rotted so the wood floor came back out and uh, you can see where I've modified the ends for the new ramps and these bars here in the middle uh, three of them are going to get cut I had about two hours each evening to uh, work on this comfortably uh, after work so here is a shot of the very first bar dropped I ended up going three inches on the drop and the uh, green spray paint is only temporary it's just to uh, keep things from rusting while I'm cutting and grinding and whatnot This slideshow shows the additional 3 inch drop on the other bars. This piece here at the front that I have circled in red is where the rails uh, attach at the front. Here is test fitting the ramps in the slot. The ramps are 2 and 3 quarters inches tall. These pieces were from a leftover home improvement project that I was able to uh, reuse. I countersunk the bolts. The chains at the back will hold the ramps in place while I'm traveling. And the side rails have been riveted over the exposed bolt holes, making a very clean install. The red circle indicates the rear jack mock-up. Here in the center, I am gluing the center rails together, and they are clamped with several C-clamps. And here's a brief little walk around of where we're at with progress. And those are fireworks in the background that you can hear. My trailer has always been kind of wonky, I guess you could say, for whatever reason. Uh, when you start to load it, it really sags in the back. And, uh, you know, I, I can get cars up on it, but it, sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle. So I uh, got on Amazon and bought these two uh, stabilizer jacks. Uh, they're rated for a 1,000 pounds each, and I figured since, you know, the trailer's going to be hooked to the truck, that they won't have the full weight of the car on them, but... Uh, um, hopefully they do help and if not I'm, I'm only out 20 bucks here I'm spot repairing uh, paint and rust blemishes uh, I'm using just some leftover rust-oleum spray paint that I had so I can work a little bit at a time and then spray it so it doesn't rust and the uh, reflector decals I had to grind them off because they were just glued on there and this is the spot where I had a uh, mount for a swivel jack at this point I have all the uh, paint and rust protection correction done except for the driver's side fender and I uh, have all the decals removed and uh, I'm trying to think what else here I'm about ready to start putting the uh, black rust-oleum paint on um, yeah Yeah, the paint looks a little bit like a clown with the green and the blue and the black, but it was spray paint that I had and uh, needed to use, and it worked well for my quick projects. But here, right here on this side, you can see where I've started to brush paint on the Rust-Oleum uh, Implement Gloss Black paint. It was a nice hot day to the day I painted this, so it baked pretty well. The first coat has been applied, so now it's time to let it set for 24 hours and dry really well. And then I will go back in and do some touch-ups where needed. The paint is done. All of the uh, reflective decals have been added. The wheels have been touched up with some silver paint. 
Uh, the only thing really left to do is to put the new winch cable on and a wear bar for the winch cable that I'm going to add. And uh, that's really about it. And then it will be ready to uh, enjoy again. But uh, pretty cool for a $400 trailer. Not much left on it the way it was when I bought it. To uh, power my trailer winch, I wired in a quick disconnect on my pickup truck. So all I have to do is plug it in and turn it on. That keeps me from having to run an external battery that I constantly have to worry about charging. It's a little bit windy today. I apologize for the wind noise. And here I am bending over to plug it in and get it ready. And then I have a switch wired inside the box that will run the cable. I replaced the fair lead with one made for a steel cable. The uh, fair lead I had on the box was made for a uh, fiber or synthetic type cable and the steel cable was cutting into it pretty bad and getting caught. So it was uh, due to be replaced. The ratcheting mechanisms on my ratchet straps smacked the side of my winch box while I'm towing the car and uh, ended up damaging the paint and causing it to rust. So I bought a tile, a rubber floor tile, cut it to size and uh, hot glue gunned it to each side of the toolbox. The hot glue uh, did not work. After a week my rubber pieces fell off so I ended up using some weather strip and gasket adhesive uh, made by 3M. Let's hope that's a little more durable. I have circled the wear bar that I installed for my winch cable since the cable is steel. When the bar wears I, out, I will just replace it. After about three weeks of working on it a few hours a night after work and on my days off a little longer than a few hours, uh, I'm happy to uh, show you the finished product. All painted nice and shiny gloss black this time with new reflector decals, a new winch cable, uh, new rear stabilizer jacks, aluminum slots in the middle for the ramps and the uh, crossbars for the trailer have been lowered to accommodate those ramp uh, slides as I would call them and uh, I'm really happy with how it looks I'm excited to start using it again the trailer all finished up I hooked it up to put it back in its regular spot and took it into town to take some video with it on the back of the pickup truck and here it is in its regular spot awaiting the next adventure well, that's a, a wrap on the trailer project. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, be sure to check out my other videos, because I'll be making more. Thank you.